Farid said in one of his videos that he was going to try to educate brothers El Fadi and Dr. J. Smith about early Islamic books. Time to give these guys an education. Or am I the one who's going to educate Farid all over again? I've been educating this ignoramus for the last couple of days about the aorta and poisoning of Muhammad in three different videos. Two short ones and a long live stream. So let us see what Farid has to say more so we can educate him once more. In this video, we got Al Fadi and Jay Smith trying to educate us about uh, the history of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they're claiming that he never existed. And I'm going to show you how ignorant these two guys are and how unfamiliar they are with Islamic sources. So it says, The Life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq's Siratu Rasulullah, which means the biography of the Prophet that's Muhammad. Right, Sirat Rasulullah, exactly. That's, that's a Sirah right there. That is a lie. Yeah. This is what everybody has been taught. This is what you have been taught. I have been taught that this was written by Ibn Ishaq. Look how thick it is. Right, and and reason why uh, people buy into it because no one, sadly, either dares to publicly question it, or at least if they question it, they keep it to themselves and they don't bring it up out front, basically. Actually, the book in Jay's hand is by Alfred Guillaume, who was a Christian. So when Al Fadi is saying nobody dares to publicly question it, um, he's being absolutely silly and he's trying to play into this whole conspiracy idea. The reason why Guillaume refers to the book as The Life of Muhammad by Muhammad bin Ishaq, it's because it's a reconstruction of the original. Wait, what do you mean the original, ya Farid? There is nothing called the original. Why? Because Sirat Rasulullah by Ibn Ishaq that Dr. J. Smith holds in his hands was compiled by a German linguist called Heinrich Ferdinand Wustenfeld. He compiled it between the years 1858 and 1860. Later on, it was translated by Alfred Guillaume and others as well. Conclusion, the man whom Muslims are dependent on to know who their false prophet is and what he exactly did in his life is not Ibn Ishaq, but an old German linguist who wrote Muhammad's life story around 160 years ago, which is a thousand years too late. The term original and Islam in one sentence is a contradiction or basically telling someone a very bad joke. Now Farid is going to tell us how early these sources are. Let's go Farid. But there's another genre and that's what we know as the, the sayings. The sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, that is the Hadith. The first to write them down in a, a, a categorized form to compile them is Al-Buhari. Look at his dates, 870. Um, that's absolutely incorrect. We actually have multiple works that predate al-Bukhari. We have, for example, Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, which predates al-Bukhari. The manuscript for Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba dates to the 13th century, which is 600 years after Muhammad. So it's not that early as Farid thinks it is. And I will talk about Bukhari in the final part of this video. Yeah, um, I got a copy of uh, Musnad Abu Dawood al-Tayalisi right here. The extant manuscript for Musnad Abu Dawood al-Tayalasi dates to the 13th century, which is 600 years later. So again, it's not that early as Farid thinks it is. I know, it's embarrassing, right? Um, I got a copy of Musnad Ahmad right here. The manuscript for Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal also dates to the 13th century, which is 600 years after Muhammad. Again, it's not that early as Farid thinks it is. Um, I got a copy of Muwatta Malik right here. The extant manuscript for Muwatta Malik dates to the 9th century, which is 200 years after Muhammad. Um, all these books predated Bukhari by quite a bit. And the earliest of these books is Sahif al Hammam. That is a baseless claim, Ya Farid, because the manuscript for Sahif al Hammam dates to the 12th century, which is 500 years after Muhammad. 
So Muwatta's Malik's manuscript is earlier than that of Sahifat Hammam. So you're wrong on that one, Farid. Farid is correct that all of these books are older than Bukhari, but they are not that old. But what he doesn't realize is the fact that he just demonstrated that Muslims have lied to us about the true dates for their sources. The extant manuscript for Bukhari dates to the 14th to the 15th century. Some Muslims even question if it's actually written by Imam Bukhari himself. Muslim tradition tells us that four people learned the hadiths of Bukhari and even disagreed with on and even disagreed with one another on things like authenticity. Three of the four even lost all of it and only one collection survived, namely that of Muhammad al-Farabri. And of course, there are problems with al-Farabri's work as well. In other words, there is no original, listen carefully, there is no original Sahih Bukhari to begin with. It's all a big hot mess. And the actual canonization of Bukhari's collection happened much later in the 1800s. Now, what is the conclusion here? All Muslim scholars believe that the stories surrounding Muhammad's life and his sunnah, i.e. the teaching and tradition of Muhammad, were reported by Sahaba or Tabi'un, which are the students of the Sahaba, meaning the first and second century of Muslims, whom they call as Salaf. Yet, now we found out that they were all written by others over 200 to even 600 years later and simply redacted it back to the 7th century, 8th century and 9th century. Yet they don't begin to appear until the 9th century to 15th century, thus 200 to 600 years too late. This suggests that they were all written by other people hundreds of years later. So what does that tell you about the Islamic sources and the extent manuscript for these sources? It's all a scam in the end, my beloved audience. You can't make this up. Without lies, Islam dies. Stay away from Islam.